Live from the news station where the local news matters. This is WHUC News 7. of the achievements by African Americans and a time for recognizing their central role in U.S. history. Also known as African American History Month, this event grew out of Negro History Week, the brainchild of the noted historian Carter G. Woodson and other prominent African Americans. Right now, I am located in the key to the south, the red carpet city, Vicksburg, Mississippi. Vicksburg National Military Park commemorates one of the most decisive Civil War battles, the campaign, search, and defense of Vicksburg. Today, the battlefield at Vicksburg is an excellent state of preservation. It includes 1,325 historic monuments and markers, 20 miles of reconstructed trenches and earthworks, a 16-mile tour road, an antebellum home, and 144 in-place cannons. There is so much to see right here in this National Military Park in the Red Carpet City. Erected by the state of Mississippi at the cost of $30,000, including $25,000 contributed by the city of Vicksburg, this sculpture is a work of Dr. Kim Sessoms from Brookhaven, Mississippi. This monument consists of three bronze figures on the base of black African graphite. Of the more than 1,300 monuments in this park, this memorial is the first tribute of its type honoring African American soldiers placed on any of the Civil War battlefields administered by the National Park Service. Right in Indianola, Mississippi, the crown of the Delta, this particular museum tells the story of the legendary B.B. King's life and career, and the stories of the Delta is history and music. And right beside me is a model sample of B.B. King's guitar, Lucille. He started life as Riley B. King in one of America's most impoverished places, the Mississippi Delta. He had little but a dream in his heart and a destiny that would take him around the world. Music lover Tom Woody from New York tells me what brought him out to this particular oh, museum. Oh, it's, uh, it, it's kind of a, a, a living step-by-step -step reminder of you know uh, just where, uh, where we've been, what we need to do. And he was a person that uh, whose music was a real part of his life. Because of his international fame, music lovers from every part of the globe begged for more about the man who became B.B. King. I also spoke with Birgit Woody from New York about what she enjoyed the most about the museum. Probably the videos, especially the videos of B.B. actually talking and talking about his life. And I mean, I, I, the whole the museum is wonderfully done, it really is. And I don't, I don't typically enjoy museums as a general rule. There's always so much reading. <laughs> And I typically, you know, my husband is a museum goer. I usually just sort of tag along. What an amazing sight to see. An entire museum dedicated to feature B.B. King, his achievements throughout his life. As many may not know, in this very cotton gin is where B.B. King worked at a young age to purchase his very first guitar, as well as he laid in state in this very place behind me. Clarksdale, Mississippi has long been described as ground zero for blues artificionados from around the world. It all started right here. That's why Ground Zero Blues Club was created to celebrate the area's rich blues heritage and provide a form in which it can continue. Located on Blues Avenue, next door to Delta Blues Museum in the heart of the historic downtown Clarksdale, Ground Zero Blues Club opened in May of 2001. The mission is to showcase the best of today's Delta Blues musician. Local attorney and businessman Bill Luckett tells me about the Morgan start and I of the got club. To be really good friends back in the mid '90s. He hired me to be a lawyer, helping him through the construction process of the house he owns here in the Mississippi Delta. It's located between here and Charleston, Mississippi, and he kept seeing these people around town. Most of them carrying cameras or whatever. And who are these folks? What are they doing? I said, these are blues music lovers. They're here from all over the world. And he said, well, what do they find when they get here? And I said, well, there's a good museum here, the Delta Blues Museum, but there's not much in the way of live music. Uh, people are asking the question, where can we hear live blues music? Many people from all over come to Clarkdale, Mississippi, just to get a taste of blues history. And Ground Zero is no short of that. From their loud music to nice cuisine, Ground Zero is a place to go. But don't just take my word for it. Just check it out. 
Although some national acts perform from time to time, visitors are more likely to find the real deal at Ground Zero Blues Club. Those musicians who lived in the Mississippi Delta and continue in the tradition of their musical forefathers, Charlie Patton, Muddy Waters, and John Lee Hooker. Wednesday through Sunday, there will always be live music at the club, as well as some good down-home food. Right across the way, since its creation, the Delta Blues Museum has preserved, interpreted, and encouraged a deep understanding into the story of blues. The Delta's Blues Museum was the world's first museum devoted to blues. It was founded January 31st, 1979. Established in 1979 by the Congree Library Board of Trustees and reorganized as a standalone museum in 1999, the Delta Blues Museum is the state's oldest music museum. As the Delta Blues Museum celebrates its 42nd anniversary on January 20th and throughout 2021, you will discover the latest new exhibits and more exciting events that partake, covering the museum's 42 years of exploring the new and preserving the blues of the past. Executive Director Shelley Ritter explains the effects of COVID-19 on the museum. Well, it's tremendously uh, reduced our visitation because we uh, normally have a lot of European travelers coming through our doors and of course with the travel ban in effect we haven't had uh, many visitors. Right around the corner back in the day the finest broadcast studios in the state of Mississippi were located right here at the WROX building. Clarksdale's first radio station went on air June 5th 1944. Among notable blues artists who hosted programs on air at this site were like Ike Turner, Robert Nighthawk, Sunny Boy Williams, Raymond Hill, and Dr. Ross, all at 257 Delta Avenue. WRX featured the finest broadcast studios in the state of Mississippi when the station moved into this building in July of 1945. WROX aired a variety of networks and local programs, including drama, comedy, news, sports, commentary, big band, pop, classic country and religious, but it would be the blues that brought this station widespread fame. Early right historic broadcasts paved the way for other African American DJs at WROX, including Ray Messenger, Ike Turner, and Raymond Hill, just to name a few. You hear that great blues music right here on the streets in Clarksdale, Mississippi. Well, that pretty much wraps it up for the northern part of Mississippi. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, more on this special Black History edition on WHUC News 7. The radio and television production and broadcast technology department is an intensive, hands-on training program designed to familiarize students with multimedia reporting. We welcome the best and the brightest students to come join the community at Heinz Community College, Utica Campus. Students receive up-to-date and dynamic instruction from faculty members who are dedicated to fulfilling hands-on training using state-of-the-art equipment and facilities. I invite you to learn more about Heinz Community College radio and television program and join us on our great journey that focuses on student success. Contact Timothy Chrysler at 601-885-7071 for more information. Welcome back. I am Makala Brown, and thank you for joining me once again for this Black History edition. Windsor Ruins is Mississippi's most iconic site and has captured the imagination for generations. It was the historic site of Windsor Plantation, destroyed by fire in 1890. Built in 1859 to 1861 by Smith Daniel, who only lived in a large mansion for a few weeks before he died, the Windsor Plantations once spawned over 2,600 acres. Legend says that from Room Observatory, Mark Twain watched the Mississippi River in the distance. During the Civil War, the mansion was used as a Union hospital and observation post, thus sparing it from being burned by Union troops. However, after the Civil War, during a house party on February 17, 1890, a guest left a lit cigar on the upper balcony and Windsor burned to the ground. Everything was destroyed except 23 of the columns, balustrade, and iron steps. Windsor Ruins is open to the public during daylight hours every day. There is no fee. What is very amazing is that these very steps that I am walking on right now were once a part of the Oakland Plantation and now are located right here at Alcorn State University campus. 
The historic chapel is the oldest building of the Alcorn State University, the first land grant college for African Americans in the nation. And this year, they will be celebrating their 150 year anniversary. Alcorn strives to prepare graduates to be well-rounded future leaders of high character and to be successful in the global marketplace of the 21st century. Community outreach and engagement, academic excellence, and diversity are some of the goals for this university. Oakland Chapel occupies a prominent position on the campus of Alcorn State University on the southwest side of ASU Drive, one of the Royal Campus Circulation Roads. It is a three-story brick building with a gable roof. Oakland Chapel was founded in 1828 by Reverend Jeremiah Chamblin as a part of the Presbyterian mission to educate the Caucasian children of the region. Alcorn is the oldest public historically black land grant institution in the United States and the second oldest state supported institution of higher learning in Mississippi. Because of such history located at Alcorn State, it is only right for such a monumental statue to be built on this campus. Dedicated in 2013, the 50-year anniversary of the assassination of Mega Efforts, this statue commemorates the life and legacy of a leader of the civil rights movement in Mississippi. Evers, as head of NAACP in Mississippi, was targeted because of his efforts to register black voters throughout the state and to integrate eating establishments in the capital city of Jackson. The statue was designed and sculpted by national acclaimed sculptor Ed DeWight. In the words of Reverend Jesse Jackson, Mega Evers still lives. He lives in every time we vote. He lives every time we choose school over jail. He lives every time we choose love over hate and courage over fear. We're going to take a quick break. Stay tuned. When stories hit home, you can trust the WHUC News 17 to give you the information you need. Here's the photos, Thursday, August 19th. If it's Heinz Community College News around the campuses. And this is only the beginning. We have a full week of activity. Weather. And now in Christmas Springs, as you can see down. Sports. Heinz is ready to get back to usual by starting the semester off in sports, sports. And more. We are WHUC News 7, Pines' only college news station that cares. Good evening. Thank you for tuning in and to this WHUC News 7 special Black History Edition. I am Makala Brown. Here in Crystal Springs, Mississippi, more than 100 years ago, a child was born in Mississippi. A dirt poor African American who grew up, learned to sing and play the blues, and eventually achieved worldwide renown. That child was Robert Johnson. The power of Johnson's music has been amplified over the years by the fact that so little about him is known and what biographical information we have only reveals itself at a, almost a glacial place. I caught up with Steven Johnson, president of Robert Johnson Blues Foundation, and he well, tells me about the importance of this museum. It teaches and it continues to uh, uh, preserve the life and legacy of uh, my grandfather, who was a blues legend, uh, Robert Johnson, King of the Delta Blues. So it, it's, it's, it's open to teach the youth about uh, his music and music in general, as well as keep his life and legacy alive. It has been said by Eric Clinton, I never found anything more deeply soulful than Robert Johnson. Mr. Johnson continues to speak only good about his grandfather, and he encourages everyone to come out to this hidden gym located along the Blues Trail. I would just like for those uh, those of you that haven't been to the museum to come. We're located in downtown Crystal Springs. Uh, we have a lot of history here. People from all over the world have come to this museum, and you can you. And I can testify that by the signing of the walls, you have people that are signing our uh, wall from all over the world. It all started right here. Home of beginnings of a school in a rented log cabin on 40 acres of land near St. Peter's Baptist Church meant the start of an organized community, education for blacks, ownership for, of lands for homes and farming, and the appreciation for the teaching blacks in head, hearts, and hands. Right here on the Heinz Community College Utica campus, one man set out a goal and established this historic campus as we know it today. The Heinz Community College Utica campus, formerly Utica Junior College and Utica Institute, was founded in 1903 by William H. Hausclaw 
a native of Alabama and a mentee of Booker T. Washington, who sought to replicate the Tuskegee experience in the Mississippi Black Belt, where many local black farmers own small farms. on this project for probably the HBCU tradition years. has been kept uh, alive from coordination no, to celebrating uh, Greek life. The Utica Institute Museum tells uh, the story of the, Little Tuskegee uh, in Royal Mississippi and director Miss Jean Green tells me about this new treasure on the Utica campus. The home of the president of Utica Junior College then became the home of the vice president for this campus. Uh, it was vacated in I think 19, mm -mm, 2013 is when it became vacated. And uh, we had permission in 2017 to start renovating this building for us to use for the museum. And it's taken us that time to get it to this point. History is often reduced to a handful of memorable moments and events in black history. Those events often include the courageous stories like those of the Underground Railroad and the historic moments like the famous I Have a Dream speech by Dr. Martin Luther King. Only a few know that history, black history at that, could be lying right in their backyards. As former President Obama stated, the change will not come if we wait for some other person or some other time. We are the ones we've been waiting for. We are that change that we seek. I am Makala Brown and thank you for watching this special Black History Edition.